Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Roger Destrudy. And as you know, every month we strive to bring a different program or department and generally a department head to talk about it here to, so you can get a better flavor for the roles and responsibilities of your Sheboygan County Government. And today, we're very pleased to have Mr. David Lafine back, who used to be our coroner, so that name probably rings a bell, but is now our new medical examiner. Welcome, Dave. Thank you very much. Please begin by sharing a little bit about your background and setting the stage. Well, I'm a Sheboygan native, born and raised here in Sheboygan. Uh, married 41 years, and two children, four grandchildren. Uh, so I've been around here all for a long time. Born and raised here, though. Born and raised. So did you go to the school in Sheboygan or Plymouth or Falls or? Sheboygan schools. In, in the city of Sheboygan. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And elected coroner a little over 28 years ago. And correct. What was it that made you uh, interested in pursuing being coroner? Well, by profession, I'm a registered nurse. And at that time, uh, some of the physicians, local physicians, uh, talked to me. Uh, they wanted someone with some background in medicine uh, to be in the, the medic, uh, coroner. So I took it, and I thought, well, I enjoy doing it. I like, I like people. Uh, medicine is my, my background. Uh, just the, the feeling of being able to help people in a time of, uh, of need. Right. You know, and, just, right. uh, and a unique area. I mean, Sheboygan County has 18 departments, and uh, the coroner, or now medical examiner, is one of those departments. And as Dave has heard me share a number of times, I always find our discussions when we discuss the annual budget one of the more fascinating discussions because then we'll generally get into your unique role and responsibilities. Right. And it is a unique area. We don't have people standing in line at the door to be coroner or now medical examiner and fortunately we've had you now for 28 years. It's one of those fields you have to you have to have a feeling for it. You have to be able to deal with a lot of circumstances that most people don't want to deal with. They don't want to they don't want to deal with death and sometimes the trauma that's involved with death. Right. Right. Yeah, I can only imagine the, the different investigations and the work you've done. Well, the county board, as Roger Testrudi certainly knows, because he helped lead the charge, and you helped uh, suggest or recommend it. You were looking at retiring from being coroner, right. not necessarily looking for another four years, and the county board for a number of years had been considering going from the elected coroner role to the appointed medical examiner role. Uh, counties could have both. Please talk a little bit about, well, what's the difference between an elected coroner and an appointed sure. medical examiner? Uh, the difference, well, first of all, Wisconsin's a unique state in that they allow or pass legislation many, many years ago uh, to allow lay medical examiners. Lay medical examiner meaning someone who does not have a medical degree. Uh, that opened up the position for counties to have their choice between an elected official or an appointed official. By state statutes, counties with populations of over 500,000 have to have a medical examiner. The other counties have the option. Uh, when you, someone who desires to be a, a coroner, you have to take out the local papers, nomination papers, and that depends on the size of your county on how many signatures you have to have. Here in Sheboygan County, with our population just over 100 some thousand, you have to have a minimum of 500. So that means anybody that wants to be coroner, you, Roger, you could have taken out paperwork, got 500 signatures, got your name on the primary ballot. Uh, there's other opposition, they had to do the same. He who got the most votes moved to the general election if there was no uh, contender, then the person, that person would become county coroner for four, year, four years. Uh, and that would just proceed year after, or four year term after four year term. And this, this past year, after ending 28 years, 
I didn't know if I wanted to go another four years, as you had mentioned. And I feel very strongly that you should have someone who has background, medical background, a nurse, uh, other per persons that are in the medical field. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the collecting system, you wouldn't have to. You could be John, jo John Doe off the street. Could be anybody. Anybody. You couldn't, you know, I don't want to degrade any profession, right. but you could, uh, you could be the, med the coroner and not even be able to understand the, the circumstances going on. And I, I felt strongly that I did not want that to happen. Right. Couldn't change it, but I recommend it to the county board, as you know, that they go to a, a medical examiner system, which other counties in Sheboygan in Wisconsin are doing out of the 72. I believe we now have 36 or 37 counties that are medical examiners. So it's becoming more and more prevalent. Right. No. That way the county has the option and holds the direction for that position. Right, right. And the reason that Dave is before us today is after the county board made the decision to go to a medical examiner and allow us to point someone with qualifications, especially a medical background, what have you, to be an effective medical examiner, then Dave approached me and said, you know, I'd be interested in helping with this transition. I don't know for how long, but I certainly know the job, and there was no question about that. So right. we feel fortunate to have someone with 28 years of experience, a medical uh, background, helping us with this transition. And of course, when Dave decides to retire or we, we part ways, obviously the county board and I as county administrator will be in position to hire and appoint a medical examiner with a medical background. So I think it was a real positive direction. So back to the key question of difference in responsibility. You mentioned the qualifications right. can be quite different between a coroner and a medical examiner. Right. What about the general work that you do? Responsibilities are the same. We, we do the same thing. I'm doing the same thing I did before. Uh, medical examiner, coroners, the whole idea or premise behind it is to look into certain deaths that are in the state statutes that are described, all homicides, all suicides, all motor vehicle uh, accidents, boat accidents, things like that, um, all unnatural type deaths. And there's certain, certain deaths such as uh, someone could die from, uh, say, congestive heart failure, but they fractured their hip two days prior to that because of other weakened condition. By state statute, we have to look into that death also. So position or job-wise, nothing changes. Uh, difference, you, as a medical examiner, you, I found that I have a little bit more responsibilities to the county as far as meetings, uh, office protocols, things like that, that a little bit more stricter uh, office practices than, than the, the way I handled it prior to. And, and with 18 departments, we have predominantly appointed department heads, but we do have elected department heads, like the former coroner, the county clerk is an elected position, the treasurer is an elected position, the register of deeds is an elected position, the clerk of courts is an elected position. And fortunately, we have some pretty good people as a whole. But the difference between appointed and elected is if one or more of those leaders aren't doing a good job, aren't showing up for work, aren't meeting their responsibilities, they could have a four-year uh, commitment and we really can't do a lot about it until the public votes again and votes them out of office. So with the appointed approach, you truly have much greater accountability that if someone isn't meeting their obligations or doing the job effectively to make a change. Great snapshot, great overview. Roger, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, although uh, none of us has uh, a great hope that someone, a medical examiner, will be at our doorstep. Death is um, a fact of life and it affects all of us. I'd like to ask you a little bit about the specifics of, of how you interact with the public, you and your staff do. And I understand there are five manners of death. Would you explain that uh, sure, a little bit? Sure, sure. Uh, five manners of death you're talking about is natural death, accident, homicide, suicide, and there's one category called undetermined. And that's, that category is when they're, they're, you can't call something an accident, 
and you can't call it a suicide, and you're sure it's not a homicide, but you're also sure it's not a natural death. So in those cases, you, you mark it as undetermined. Rare, few and far between, but it does happen. And how many deaths a year does your office investigate? Okay, years, for the past several years, we were investigating well over 500. We uh, took a look at the state statutes, how they were written, how medicine has transpired in the last number of years uh, with the advent of hospice nursing, with the advent of nurse practitioners and how physicians handle their office. And we, I felt after looking at that, it was maybe time to, to take a better look at how we look at the deaths. When we have somebody that's in hospice care, you know that they're being cared for by a hospice nurse. Uh, they may be in a setting where we used to go, such as a, a CBRF, which is an acronym for community-based residential facility, where they don't have any nursing staff on hand. So if someone died there, we would always go to the, those type of deaths. Now quite a few of those individuals are under hospice care. So if that's the case, feel very comfortable that the care is good and the medical condition is well documented and the hospice nurse or the nurse practitioner has had direct contact with the physician. So I felt, felt it was no longer needed to do those. And that was a, a quite a big number. Uh, it turned out to be a little over 300 cases last year that we did not do because of, of uh, the change, which saves the county money, uh, doesn't interfere with families prime time with their, their loved ones and family. Uh, so I, I think it was a good, a good decision. Mm -hmm. How we interact with the families, as you asked, uh, each, each death is unique and individual, and each family is unique and individual. And, and you approach these people carefully and, and get a feel for how they handle it. Some are, are very happy and relieved that their loved one no longer suffers. Some are completely broken up, so you use compassion and, and maybe just a, a, a touch on the hand to let them know that you care. You limit your conversation to what needs to be done. Others you sit and talk with for an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, I've laughed with families, I've cried with families, I've prayed with families. Mm -hmm. Everybody's unique, you know, and I think my deputies have the same feeling for this as I do, and I think, I think it's a good, good interaction with them. And what would be some of the examples that uh, require you to uh, uh, go into an investigation to determine the cause of death? An accidental death, mm -hmm. why, why the accident occurred, uh, what type of injuries were involved in the accident. If it's a, a work-related death, then you're getting involved with OSHA, things like that. You, you do a detailed uh, examination. Traffic fatalities, you're working with the law enforcement on what the injuries were, how the accident happened. You share information, uh, work very closely with law enforcement and things like that. And maybe not many people are aware of uh, the fact that uh, Sheboygan County has a morgue Mm -hmm. and would you describe it and the upgrade and how often it gets used in a year? Sure. A morgue is, serves two purposes. It serves a purpose for a place where we can bring a deceased. Uh, if we do not have a, a family on scene to give us direction on a funeral home, we use the morgue for uh, autopsies. And autopsies are done when you certain Certain situations require them. Um, if we have a death at the, the, one of the correctional institutes, by state statutes, we have to do an autopsy. Uh, if we have a young person that for no apparent reason dies, there's no family history of any significant uh, health problems, uh, no disease process going on, we'll do an autopsy. Another uh, thing that's happening is 
as you probably are well aware of, is, is the drug situation that's increasing throughout the United States and, and in Sheboygan area, it's prevalent also. So if we have a, a death uh, with drugs involved, the police are looking for information to be provided on the type of drug, the amount of drug, and with that information, it enables them to prosecute the person that's selling the drugs. So drug deaths are, are probably one of the bigger number of deaths that we, we investigate and have autopsies for. And does the morgue get used for any other purposes besides another, the autopsies? Another purpose would be um, tissue harvesting. Tissue harvesting is on, on the back of your driver's license where you can indicate that you want to be an organ donor. An organ donor is different than tissue harvesting in that an organ donor, they maintain your life on life supports. So you would be in a hospital and then you could, that would be where an organ donor would come in. A tissue donor is a post-mortem, someone that's passed away uh, within a certain time frame and people become tissue donors, they sign up for it or if we talk to the families and tissue that they take is, can be um, skin and skin is used for cancer patients, it's used for burn patients, uh, bone, they'll take what's called the long bones, your femur, your humerus, the upper arm and then the, and the bone in the leg and they'll use that for uh, bone grafts for cancer patients. They also can take uh, ligaments from the knee for athletic injuries, transplant of, of a, a ligament or a tendon. Uh, they, can't take, they don't take the heart, that would be an organ uh, donation, but what they can take are heart valves. Uh, the eye bank will come in and they, they'll take the, the corneas for cornea, cornea transplants. Uh, and there is no cost to the family when, when they do that. They, they are giving, giving a loving gift of, of their loved one's uh, tissue for, for purpose, for medical purpose to save and help some other people. Well, Dave, thank you for your 28 years as coroner and helping us with the transition to a medical examiner. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Roger, and I imagine our viewers just very quickly understood when I said why talking to you can be so interesting. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a field that most of us don't spend a lot of talk, time thinking about, yet alone talking about or getting information, so I, I really find the work you do so important, and we're very fortunate, as Roger said, to have you aboard. You mentioned earlier when Roger uh, was asking about you know, the numbers of deaths, and you used to investigate up to 500 a year, and that number's dropped because you made a decision based on what state statutes allow and how the medical field has changed that right. going to a hospice, for example, maybe wasn't the best use of time. And, and I want to compliment you for that because I know board members years ago used to get some concerns every now and then because I can't imagine how challenging it has to be to walk onto a, a scene where someone has recently died or been killed or in an accident, uh, that's gotta be tough enough, but then to go to a hospice where they're expecting their loved one to pass away, uh, emotions are probably high, and then here comes the coroner or now medical examiner to ask them what happened and how this played out. And of course you were just doing your job, but uh, I, ha I gotta believe the people skills that you need to apply in the difficult situations you go into, that's challenging work. Yeah. So at, from this point forward, and this started what, last year was it? I forgot when you changed the policy. We, we made the change in November of uh, 2013. So 14 was the first full 14 year. 14 was the first yeah. full year. Yeah, I'm sure that's, I'm sure the, our constituents appreciate that because those of us who have been in a hospice situation, I mean, that's tough enough and I'm sure you don't mind necessarily uh, relying more on the hospice nurse and right. doctors involved to, to help you with that as well. So again, my compliments on that. Back to the investigation. So you have to go and investigate certain situations. You talked about the use of the morgue. 
but what else is involved with conducting a death investigation? You look at the, the whole picture. You look at the individual, you look at his health history, uh, what type of uh, medical conditions he has. You take a look at the medications he's on. You know, are the medications appropriate uh, for his, for his uh, health condition? You look at the amount of tablets. Are the, are the number of pills in correlation to the, when they were prescribed? how often they're prescribed. So you're looking to make sure that the person isn't being over, wasn't being over medicated or under medicated. Um, and when you gather this data, Dave, then do you have to complete documentation and send that on to the state or to no, law there, enforcement? No, there's nothing or? sent on to the state in that, in that part of it. Uh, we maintain a record. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, one, one, it's a two-sided record. It's, one side is all the, the documentation of the name, the date of birth, uh, physician, date of death, time of death. Uh, we get all the, if the date of death is different than the, the pronounced date and time. So that's, that's all documented for, yeah. and then we do a, a brief narrative, you know, mm -hmm. uh, explaining, you know, John Jones, age 66, died at home or wherever, had a health history of such and such. We just kind of, a, little, a brief synopsis of, of the situation and indicate on there what the, I'm listing as the cause of death mm -hmm. and the manner of death. And the importance of a medical background and certainly uh, the importance of having some experience in this field if, if, that's, if that's possible, if you've been a coroner or a medical examiner right. before. So you uh, shared with our viewers the five manners of death or five manners of determining how someone right. died. Uh, what about now that a person's passed away, what are the four manners that someone is... Uh, uh, final disposition. Final disposition, that's the word I was looking for, right. thank you. Final disposition, disposition, you can either be buried, entombed in a mausoleum, uh, cremated, or donate your body to science, which is called scientific. Uh, thing, another thing that the medical examiner's office does is certify the cremation permit. We look into, if it's not our specific case, we look into what the physician indicates as the, as the cause of death. We view the body to make sure that, that there is nothing unusual, suspicious. Um, sometimes you get someone that had fallen, has injuries, but the care provider, hospice, nursing home, whatever, there may, they don't, maybe aren't looking at that as the cause of death. Somebody may be fractured an arm or whatever. They're not looking at that as the cause of death. They don't call us maybe. Physician will put down uh, something. You, you make comparisons on what, what they're putting down and what you see. Gotcha, gotcha. And then final question, in the few minutes we have remaining, you've, you've you know, better than 28 years of experience. What have been some of the biggest changes you've seen during your career or some of the biggest challenges? I think I would have to say the increase, the substantial increase in, in drug deaths of, of young persons um, putting those poisons into their system with total disregard of what could happen or does happen. With drugs, uh, heroin, you know, a person can maybe be a heroin user, dabbling in it, but you never know how much is going to be there to kill you. Mm -hmm. it, they don't, that's not a, a substance that's controlled and says you have this amount in that, that tablet or that what, crack or rock, what they call it. Right. You, you never know the potency, right. and that was that's what gets them. Yeah, and those have got to be the tougher scenes to come upon too. Oh, it sure is. You know, family members they they maybe suspect that their their son or daughter dabbled with marijuana. Well, then all of a sudden they find some pills or tinfoil wrapped in their pocket, and then they become suspicious, and you know, yeah. one thing leads to another, and all of a sudden it's it's too late. Right. Right. 
Well, again, a pretty heavy subject, and uh, I certainly hope you got an appreciation for the important work that our medical examiner has done and continues to do. And we certainly thank you for your public service, Dave. Well, thank you, and you know, thanks. Thank Roger and the, and the whole county board for their confidence in me. Yeah. You know, yeah. when I decided to retire, I had no idea of going on. <laughs> uh, so when, when it came along, it just yeah, forced my hand a little bit, and I retired from my other, my other full-time job. And so You certainly have given us a seamless transition, that's yeah. for sure, and, and we appreciate that, it. That was the intent. Yeah, and if you have questions, if you have any questions or want to talk to Dave more about his roles and responsibilities or learn more about the topic today, don't hesitate to, to give him a call. Is there a contact, a general contact info, a number, or go to the website, or what's your preference? You can go to the website. The, the office number is listed there. Okay. If I don't happen to be in the office at that particular time, the transfers to the Sheriff's Department, and they'll, they'll get a hold of me. Very good. So look up our Sheboygan County website, or certainly you can contact county administrator or chairman's office or county clerk, sheriff's department, and they'll get you to the right person. But thank you for joining us today, and I hope you uh, learned something about, again, the important work of medical examiner. Next month, we're going to be talking about the important work of the county board and the county as a whole. Uh, recently, Chairman Destrudi and I uh, presented the state of the county to the county board, and we had the opportunity to give a little update on WHBL and uh, Chairman Destrudi thought it would be a good idea, and I agreed to provide a state of the county here for our WHBL viewers. So next month, I guess we'll be the guest, Roger, or you'll be the, the host, and I'll be the, the guest, but uh, we'll tag team and talk a little bit about big picture, 18 departments, $127 million budget, 825 employees, implementing about 207 programs across the county, what are we doing? What have our successes been? What are our challenges ahead? So until then, thank you very much. Take care, and we'll see you next month.